Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 50. I can't believe you made it to episode 50. It's been a fun ride. Uh, we have a lot of information to cover. How are you do doing, Balaji? Welcome to episode 50. Absolutely, Rajni. I'm thrilled. Uh, I can't even believe the time flies so fast. We do this as a bi-weekly and 50 times two weeks. I don't know how many ever years that is. This is fun. And it's been <laughs> a fun ride. I personally enjoy, uh, look forward to this every time uh, we show up on this particular podcast uh, to share what we have. Um, and this, is, mm -hmm. this has been a good journey. I like it. We definitely learned a lot, and we we were doing the learning part even without this, right? By being able to share this and put our thoughts a little bit more uh, succinctly to be able to share, that's been great. And I think anytime you can share information, you also learn more, right? Because one of Absolutely. the like, reading from a book is different, but when you can actually tell somebody else what you read, it actually registers better. So it's a great pro great process for us, and it's been and again, there's no dearth of information in this space right every day feels like something new is happening so you know two weeks are almost like a lifetime so we always have so much interesting things and we've been able to showcase some of our use cases and it's, it's been fun so we maybe next episode we can recap some of the things we've learned and maybe share our learnings and other that other people can you know learn along the way absolutely Rajin. one of the things i i started when we started this i'm looking back right i thought my uh, of myself as a noise filter right so everything goes through these years and eyes and whatever and whatever comes out just refine and whatever makes it work right um, and over time i have to tell you i mean i think we are all adjusting ourselves to all this dark of information that's hitting us right and what is mm -hmm. actually useful what's not what's actually synthetic what's actually real um whole experience i i think this has been very very uh good um so yeah with that said let's start start with this one all right so talking about synthetic and real let's talk about the latest chat gpt i know the version gpt5 is not released yet but uh the upcoming orion model model from gpt the improvements are based on what we read on uh, twitter and just early feedback has been that there are some improvements but the overall speed at which um, where we were wowed every time we went from one to two to three or four there was such a big jump in uh, capabilities they're not seeing that the rate of gpt AI improvement is slowing is really the takeaway from this and i think there's some truth to that because here's a, it's a 20 percent of the training model showed by orion matching gpt4 quality under 100 percent training origin mark Orion marginally outperforms its predecessor. So I think they were talking about scaling laws where more compute, more data means consistently AI improvement. But I think we have more compute or we are fighting for more compute. But the data part is not like, I think they've used up all the useful data. So I think the rate is just slowing. Any initial thoughts for you on that one? Um, so my initial thoughts are, I think uh, when I read the article, someone mentioned it's a quadratic function, the compute that's needed to get um, uh, get information um, to a more intelligent form, right? Uh, so so the, the key question here is, is there a market for that much of intelligence? What does it even mean, that high intelligence material floating out there, right? Um, so I go back to our original thought, like, okay, maybe the, all of the initial, um, initial uh, extraction of information and usefulness has been explored in the last two years. Um, now for the higher order intelligence uh, that to emerge and to consume, um, we are looking at business process transformation, right? It, something has to fundamentally change to consume those uh, those type of, uh, in, that's, again, it's all in theory, right? So if you are getting the higher order intelligence out there, can we keep doing what we are doing right now in the same way we are doing? and there's it seems like a disconnect to me right so in other words we when a new technology emerges we said mobile first right like that there has to be ai first business process not the existing process fitted for ai right so i think we are going through this journey i think we are going to take what incrementally is there to plug in and experience that first before we okay now it seems to work now let's change the whole thing right let's do AI first. Um, that's uh, that's the journey I can think of next decade. This is how probably things will emerge. 
But it's an interesting question. Like if the race to get more higher order, who's the consumer? Who wants to use this? What are they going to use for? So many questions in there. I think, what do they say? The, a data center will cost about $100 billion. But OpenAI argues that a five gigawatt center could contribute 20 billion in GDP. All great to know, but but really is there, um, it has to stop stop making financial sense at a certain point, right? The scaling right. laws. And do you want to spend another 100 billion for 3% better improvement? Is that even worth it? So I, so I think the general, the, I think this is where the, some of the open source will catch up. But I think we talked about it a little bit before we got into this call is uh, maybe that's the real value once you have a certain level of intelligence is now applying it to a very specific vertical, whether you get data of internally to a business or now I'm going to um, modify or uh, adapt this intelligence layer just to work in healthcare. I'm going to provide, you know what I'm saying, like very specific data or very specific use cases. I didn't see us getting there that this fast. Maybe this is at this point, we will find new avenues for data. But the bottom line is I can see intelligence reaching, for example, the reasoning, right? It's a lot better. I personally don't do a lot of uh, scientific research for me to know the difference, but maybe that will open up a new world of data that can be consumed. Right, and and uh, I'll give you a more practical thing that I saw, right? The, we, we all know this company called Palantir, right? And, mm -hmm. and when, when it came to the surface, everybody was trying to think, what is it that they do? Why, why are they valued? What is it? That, so this is the type of, okay, you can call they do some other higher order intelligence for the governmental agencies or military or whatever. Uh, but you, you see the disconnect right there, right? And we moved into chat GPT with, with Palantir in the background. Right now, it's coming back to the foreground. Uh, it, why I am saying this is, yes, OpenAI and others might find something, but that's probably going to be consumed by governments. Not, I don't know whether we are consuming that level of intelligence or for what. I have no idea, right? So that's, that's the bigger picture here. Maybe that's what they are fighting for. They want money from the government to feed the information back to the government, not to you and me, trust me. <laughs> this bigger body that I have, a uh, bigger organization that have more data that Nation leverage. states. I agree. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. I know this is also the next topic I want to cover is some, we've, we've been talking about it, but like there's so many use cases, but what are some of the best AI models for every business task? And this is from uh, Neuron. It's a really nice newsletter. If you guys don't subscribe to it, you should get it. But I just want to read some of these because for example, if you're looking at a very specific, they, they've done all of this uh, research on the performance metrics, but if your use case or your company just really want to say, hey, I want to leverage AI for coding and development. The winner in their ranking is a Claude 3.5 Sonnet New because it consistently outperformed GPT-4, better understanding complex code bases, cost less for similar tasks, and more reliable generating code. So I don't know if you've had an exposure to Cloud 3.5. I really like them for content creation, but I don't know if you use for coding. Have you had a chance to look at it in thoughts? On I, I have played with the GPT 4.0 and Cloud as well. And I again, this I okay. stay divided between the two. I kind of like the GPT 4.0 to some aspect because I, I'm not submitting code bases. I'm just playing with snippets of code, right? So there's a difference right. here if you, if you are, what are you after? Because we know Anthropic is big on uh, large context chewing through data, trying to figure. So if you have the entire base and it's able to come up with better code, I, I can understand why Cloud is outperforming there. Um, but it, it depends on the use case, right? If you're submitting the whole code base to come up with uh, things, yes, it, it might make sense. Makes sense, okay. So now I'm going to that data and analysis and processing, which is where most of our use cases that we're thinking about are in that space for just pure analysis. Then Gemini 1.5 Pro, because 2 million token context window, which is largest available, superior handling large data sets, built-in visualizations, and of course, integration with this Google ecosystem. So this one feels like a good option for any kind of data analysis and processing, which is what Google does very well. Hundred, yeah, exactly. They 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 have been um, what do you call it, in that business for a long time. So you ought to probably go with that. I I believe so. Yeah. 